have exactly 45 minutes, I will, I pray that I will go exactly by time. But to a gun, Navy. Now the good thing is that you do not know exactly what I have in my notebook. So, okay, feel to me if you come on a feel come on me hang. Maybe God will give us another chance. Sawa, sawa. I will go with the leading of the Holy Spirit. If he does not want me to cover everything that is in my book, I will not cover. Where he wants me to tarry, I shall tarry. Sawa, sawa. Aye. Nimesema tu just as a disclaimer. Um, I am privileged to stand here um, by the mercies and the grace of God. It has nothing to do with my eloquence. It has nothing to do where I have studied. It has nothing to do with me. I am just a mere Man, that is the best explanation I can give concerning my name, James Kimani. I am just a mere man. And I am here because um, the ministry team and our pastors and our bishop and our mom, Pastor Alice, have all agreed that I shall be standing here in this day according to the grace of God and the plans of God. And so, may we begin. Um, just as I said, uh, my name is James Kimani. The topic that we shall be tackling today is true Repentance. We shall be speaking about true repentance. And maybe just if I could give you a backstory concerning this message before we start, maybe in the next three minutes. This is a message that I received in prayers. And I knew that I was supposed to speak about it because it was deposited in my heart. And I remember last Sunday as I, um, as I was sharing with uh, the network I am in, I'm a member of, uh, that's the Young Professionals. I decided when I was seated here that I'm going to start with them because it was placed in my heart that it needs to start. Before you stand before my people, I want you to start somewhere. And that is where I started, in Young Professionals. So what wa YP, mkisikia ni na jirudia, musitoroke. It's the right place to be. Now I have more, more time to delve into it deeper. So to Tarakisha Kidogo than what uh, we shall go deeper than what we had tackled. But I just pray that you shall remain and take what is yours this day. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two edged sword. Alive and active. Alive and active. There's always something new coming from the word of God. You can never exhaust it. Are we together? Aye. So uh, as I said, the topic is true repentance. Media team we will project for us. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we shall read from verse 11 to 21. Because it's a long verse, uh, I, will, uh, I will ask if you just, so that we don't delve too much time reading this portion of scripture. So if I say, it is to follow Pamoja as I go, I will use my phone, but he's using the same version, uh, that is uh, NKJV. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse, verse 11. Are we all there? Okay, so um, here's the word of the Lord. It says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuaded men, but we are well known to God. <coughs> Excuse. And I also trust our, trust are well known in our conscience. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf, that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. Or if we are, if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live, those who should live, who live, should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, 
not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we employ you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be seen for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. I take it again, verse 17 and verse 18, because this is where we shall be delving on. Uh, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is what? If anyone is in Christ, he is a? The old, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God. I want you to underline if you're using your Bible. It says, now, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So, um, as we talk about repentance, we shall look, we shall look at two sides. One, one side, I, I don't have the right English to... Uh, but I don't have the right English to bring these words together. But I believe in your own knowledge and your understanding, with the guiding of the Holy Spirit, he shall help you put these words into perspective. So these are the things. We shall look at two sides when you're talking about repentance. And one of them is salvation. And the second part that we shall be looking at is kingdom. But I am afraid we shall not get into too deep for today. On the second part, but we shall talk about um, repentance on the side of salvation and repentance on the side of the kingdom. Now, we shall be looking into some scriptures so that, you know, we are told that the word of God is that which remains. We shall all go at one point in time, but the word of God shall remain. So we shall base our faith on his word. Sawa, sawa. Uh, in, in salvation, we do not walk we do not work for anything. It is a gift given to us. The work was finished in Calvary. All we are expected to do is to believe in the finished work. We cannot speak about salvation without mentioning. I can have our first verse, uh, John chapter 3, verse 16. Or even as media Timachana, you. John chapter 3, verse 16 says what? For. Uh huh. Let's say it again, Pamoja, one, two, three. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believes in him shall not, but have. Good. Nice. Uh, so this is the first thing that we are looking at. So in this redemption that we have been, in this um, repentance that you have been called into, because you are going to see it in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians Chapter 7, verse 10. Why I'm talking about it in repentance, we shall see it in a few. In this salvation that we have been brought into has been given. We have not worked. So when you say that God has saved me, it is not because of how good you are. It is not about how good you dress. It is not about how well-mannered you are. It is not about you. It is not about me. It will never be about anyone. Salvation is a gift from God. This is one thing we need to understand about God. There is nothing you can do to earn salvation. Nothing. Nothing. It was given. When Christ went to the cross, he went to the cross with me and you in mind. Even before we have... So that I can show you it's a gift. How many of us were alive when Christ went to the cross? None of us. But each and every one of us gets to appreciate and gets to enjoy this gift that is freely given. Now, how about the place? missions. But when you missions, sasa. That's why they say you need to give what you have been given. Now, just saying and proclaiming the word of God is enough. Telling that person that he or she has been saved. I, God I could ask for our permission. Should I save you? He never, he did it on his own, own. He only decide. See, to me, you to talk the book of Second Corinthians, that it is in him, that he, he, it is in Christ, that he, in him, him inside Christ, he reconciled us back to him. There's nothing we have done. 
to earn salvation. And we will never do anything to earn salvation. Let's go to the book of John chapter 4, verse 10. We shall read this. And then media team, you shall give us 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. Um, I want in the next five minutes to be done with this first part so that we can go to the next one, which is a bit uh, bulky. Um, that is the book of John chapter. We, we can see the book of John chapter John chapter 4, verse to Kopamoja, John chapter 4, verse 10, it says, Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he should, he would have given you the living, other version says the living waters. Now, I want us to understand something very, very important. In this story about the Samaritan woman, this is the story behind, the story behind is the story about the Samaritan woman. Pali Christ alienda kwa wea laka chill. Tu kiasi, akapata madama, mekamu, kuchota maji, akanza kupiga story na e, alafu ndo akanza kumuambia that if you only knew who I was, imagina kuitisha saizi, if you could get the water that I have, the living water, now that is salvation that we are talking about here. Give me a drink. You would have asked him and he would have given you the living waters. Up there in Asema, if you knew the gift of who? Of God. All right, let's go to the book of um, Second, as we, as we try and learn this. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. And this is the word of God. This is what it says. For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be reg regretted, not to be regretted, but to, but the sorrow of the world produces death. For godly sorrow produces what? Produce, tuko pamoja. Are we in the same? Musiniambia ni wasmamisho ni wadansiche ndo mchanga mke. For godly sorrow does what? For godly sorrow produces repentance. Leading to, leading to what? So before you get into salvation, there is something called godly sorrow that takes you where? Takes you to what? To repentance. And it is in that repentance that we are in that it leads you to what? Salvation. That is, yes, a son, son, a Morgan. That leads us to salvation. And it goes ahead and says, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. And I want to read it with a different version so that we can just get uh, to hear how it says. So I'm going to use amplified version. It says, For godly grief and the pain God is permitted to direct produces repentance that leads, to, that leads and contributes to salvation and deliverance from evil. And it never brings regret. But worldly grief, the hopeless sorrow, that is, that is a characteristic of the pagan world, is deadly, breeding, and ending in death. We've been given, we've been given a con contrast on the two sorrows that are given. One that is godly, that leads us to salvation, that brings us to repentance and then leads us to salvation, and another that is worldly, that will lead you to death eventually, however good it is. The path is death. The end is death, not God, not salvation. So there's a contrast we need to understand. Um, sorrow, sorrow describes a feeling, but repentance describes a change in both the mind and the life. It is very possible to be sorry for a sin committed, but still not repent your sin. Let me bring you home. Let me make it more, more clearer. It is very possible to be sorry for someone, to be sorry for your sin, and not repent. Let me bring you close. Aye, to me examples, because I think it relates to almost everyone. Let's say you have worn white sneakers. Unajua how long it takes to scrub those things. You have worn your white sneakers, na unenda form. Tuseme unenda wedu, ama unenda wapi, unenda tu maform zako. Then, on your way to form, Somebody steps on you. Kwanza na iwe thaya saizi, anaku, anaku fanya ile kitu. Anaku, anaku kanyangi na vumbi, anaku kanyanga na matope. So what comes directly from our mouth 
is not something pleasant at times. Sawa, sawa. We are all in the process of sanctification. What comes out from our mouth sometimes is not a really good thing. And I will, I will spare your ears not to even give you an example, least you fall. But you say something very weird that comes from your mouth. Alafu wapo unajishikilia uko. Kwa? Iyo ni mdomo yangu. Unajuliza tu swali. But deep inside, you know it's wrong. Umejiambia, hey, na nikubaya, iyo mdomo inaongea vibaya. But deep inside, you know it's wrong, but you will justify your acts. And you will say, lakini kwa nini ameni kanyanga? Now that is exactly that is one example of the many examples that sometimes we are brought to sorrow and we do not repent. You know the different things that maybe you have done. You feel bad, you have done something. You do not want to forgive someone, but yet in our Lord's prayer you go and use those words as Peter mentioned here, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive the trespasses the trespasses that we've done to other people. These are the things that I'm trying to tell you. It is that godly sorrow that only gets us to repentance. And in that repentance is where we get salvation. So there are times that in this earthly sorrow, we will think that we are trying to play as God and we are not supposed to be play, playing as God. We are supposed to be the creation that has been created. Sawa, sawa. Mutu kukanyanga with white sneakers. You need to remind yourself inside. And this is why we need the quickening of the Holy Ghost. We need to stop being carnal men and be spiritually led men. Because the Holy Spirit will not allow some things to come from your mouth and anyamaze tu na yo kienda form tu tawa kwambi, hey manzi, umefanya fit ya nafaka kwambi wa hivyo. He will convict you like nobody's business until you say sorry. And that is where we need to get at. Let's continue. Um, the last scripture that we shall look at uh, here comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. Uh, media team, kindly, um, if you have it ready, you can just um, take care of Ephesians, chapter 2. This is where now we are going to be branching to now to the other thing that I was talking about on the kingdom matters. Uh, Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. Um, NKJV, let me just go back. Uh, it says this. Uh, for by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now, my, my, my point of focus right now, uh, as we go, we will get back to this verse, but my point of focus is verse 8. It says, for by grace you have been done what? You have been saved. Through what? Through faith. And, and that not of yourselves, it is what? The gift of who? The gift of God. This is just to solidify that salvation will never come because of the ways of men. It will never. However philanthropic you are, it will never. The standards of God will only be sustained by the standards of God. The written word, nothing else. Sawa, sawa. Aya, tuendele. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. This shall take us to the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 8 and 9. As we, uh, as we conclude this uh, part, uh, Romans chapter 10, Romans, Romans chapter 10, verse 8 and 9. 10. I'll read it using NIV. It says, um, verse, verse 8, but what does it say? The word is near you. It is, your, it is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. Verse 9, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be if you do what? This is actually the in quotes, this is the only work we are supposed to do. If you do what? If you declare in your... Uh, if you declare in, in your... Jesus is Lord and believe in your... That God raised him from the dead, you will be... This is the in quotes work we need to do. 
if you think about it as work. This is the only way we know that is prescribed in the word of God. And go to verse 10 says, For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. It is in your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is in your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. No other way. Um, this, is, this is all we have we, have, uh, we had and have to do uh, to be saved. You do not need to buy bulls, rams, and any animal to sacrifice. The blood of Jesus did it all at once, once and for all. All we need to do is to confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Our Lord is alive. Our Lord is alive. That is all we need to know. Because the Bible says, and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Our Father is alive. Our, our, not our Father, but Christ Jesus is alive. It is in him that we got this salvation, and he is alive. And that's why we need to still stick with exactly what the prophets of old spoke of and the law spoke of. They all led to Jesus Christ. So the ways that have been prescribed are the ways we need to walk by. No other way. To Manzana, story of salvation, how to Jamalizana, that is just a basis, a foundation of what I have given you. May the Holy Spirit quicken you to get more of, of, of these words. Ah, yeah. The salvation is a gift from God, not of works. We did no monetary transaction. We didn't earn it through our toiling and laboring for it, but it is a gift. That's why, that's why, guys, you need to tell people about God loving them. It is not you who bought with your money. Whenever you find somebody doing something wrong, it is not your place. Your place is to make sure that they know that God loves them and he died for them. For the Bible says in the book of Philippians that Christ was both fully man and fully God. Sasa, these things need to be shared. Don't stay with Christ like he is your possession. He is not. He is not your possession. Share him out. He owns you. Share him out. Because the rest of the people who do not know him are still owned by him. The Bible says that it is in him, through him, and by him that this world was created. So share the word of God. Do not stop. God loves you. You do not know what those words will do. Maybe You do not know. Just say those words. And if the Holy Spirit quickens you to continue with that conversation, continue with it. You will not die. This is just a plea from your brother. You will not die. If you share the love of God, no one will die. Sawa, sawa. You have the backing from heaven. Ah, yeah. Now, let's uh, transition to what we are going to look at next. So the first, the first thing that we have looked at in a nutshell, if you were to, to give it a subtitle, I will call it, this is the old man. How we deal with the old man. This was back in the days, how you were. Sawa, sawa. How you were. Sawa, sawa. Back in the days, this is the old man. I want us to look at the new man. The new man that we are in after we have been saved. Good. Ah, nice. Nina Penda, Tukopa Moja. After we have been what? After we have been saved. Now, this is the repentance that we need to continue with. Remember the first repentance that I was talking about? I told you I don't have the best way to put these words. But anyway, I know the Holy Spirit shall give you good words, better than I. So the, things, the thing is, the first way that we're looking at repentance is how it brought us to salvation. And that we have nothing to do with works. Now, this other one, we have a lot to do with us. It has a lot to do with us. The first one we to link here, bila kazi. To link here, because we will be able to kwa mdomo, na to kamini kwa? Kwa roa ama moyo? Moyo. Okay, sawa. To say zote mbili basi. Sawa, sawa. That is how we got into salvation. Now, this other one, for you to become a person who will work for the kingdom of God, you have to be daily have an attitude called a repentant heart daily. 
Now, what is repentance? Repentance is turning back, changing of mind, doing things different. We have been told that it is in God, it is in Christ through, it is God used, uh, worked through Christ to bring us into reconciliation. For us to stay there, we need to be very conscious. We need to choose the way. We need to, every single day, beating my, beating my what? Beating what? My body. So that what? Aye, sawa, sawa. So the thing is, what Paul is trying to allude to that verse is that everything that he says, he should not be counted as not unfit or unqualified to that. Sawa, sawa. That's why he puts his body into subjection. Sawa, sawa. And this subjection is for us getting it from Christ. Because there is a price that we shall get towards the end. He prize, I could become a gift. He prize has to be worked for. And this is the way we are supposed to be living. Having a repentant attitude every day. That the way that I choose, I shall continue into it. Let me tell you something that may come as harsh, but forgive me. As I keep on telling you guys every single time, I'll rather step on your toes but not step on God's toes. Si mnani ruhusu? Nikikuambia, nikikuamba pole usininyime, si ndiyo? Tumongia mambo ya repentance tu saizi. Sawa, sawa. Here is the truth. We are the creation. We are the creation. We should stick being the creation. God has not given us an allowance. Gen Z, Gen Y, Gen Y, whatever, millennial, polleni. We have not been given the authority to be creative in the body of Christ. Let the word stick as it is. Do not change anything. Do not look for ways. There are no many ways. There is only one way. There are no, we have not been called into the broad way. We have been called to the narrow way. So if you are coming to God, your way of repentance, your way of changing the life is to make sure that you have transformed your mind and your heart and you have declared in your heart as you came into this salvation that, Lord, it is you I shall follow. It is your word that I shall stick by. I will not be creative. We have not been given the mandate to be creative. We have not. Do not edit the Bible. Do not bring your doctored salvation. Do not. Do not do that. Because this is the world that we are living in right now, where we can do whatsoever we do. We see things happening in the world, we want to adopt them into the church. God shall judge us. And he does judge us. Because we shall give an account. We shall give an account. There's something I told uh, YP, and let me just repeat it because I am feeling that I need to speak about it. Here's the thing. God is not interested with your perfect pitch voice when you worship him. He's interested with your heart. He is not interested with your good moves as I dance, when I dance to him. He's interested in my heart. In my heart. And the Bible says, media team, allow me just to go there. Jeremiah chapter 17. I want to show you something. Let us digress, Kidogo. We shall come back. We still have time and I want us to pray towards the end. So, Hold me accountable. Jeremiah chapter 17. Um, Jeremiah chapter 17. Um, at Kwapo, NKJV, uh, NKJV version. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. Um, oh, yes, verse 9. If you go to verse 8, we'll change the whole topic of the sermon. Uh, we go to verse 9, it says, The heart is, the deceit, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know? I want us now to read it together. May it have the weight that it's supposed to have when God is speaking to you. This is what it says. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know? Higher. Let's go to verse 10. Let me show you something else. This is what the Bible says. I, the Lord, such is the what? To pause to up. What have we read above? That the heart is the most deceitful what? The most, the most deceitful above all things. If you put all things, all things means all. Unona all things ninini, all things 
ni kila kitu that is in existence think about it all things i do not know i'll be careful with my words i do not know if it has something to do also with the devil i do not know but have it in mind all things you can live a lie it becomes true you can live a lie it becomes true you can live a lie but that lie will never be true in god's eyes it will never so if you come here raise up your hands in singing perfect pitch voices in whatever you do in your job company in your philanthropic things as you do as you say that you are giving and you not give it based on your heart it is nothing to god may i present it to you it is not a good thing to god because he such is what to mali say statement so that it does not hang i the lord search the heart i test the mind even to give every man according to his ways according to the fruit of his doing there is a reward for those people who give and those people who do things based on their heart and genuinity in their heart authenticity yako ni mambo ya god kuna reward for that on the flip side there is a reward for anyone who does the same things unafanya but your heart is not for god all of them have a reward the question is where will you stand because you can never we can never me included we can never lie to god i might look i am happy come here preach to you guys say everything alafu ikue god anajua you never stayed in the courts for me to give you my word he might know that he not might he will know that he knows that so you are just there pretending everything hakuna mambo na talent kwa god he has given you that gift but he looks into your heart this is true repentance it happens from inside ah uh, let's continue um second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 ni me digress i have lost kidogo but i will we wish we shall recapture uko mbele um with the leading of the holy ghost it says uh second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creation all things have passed away behold all things have become new now i want you to start a new uh subtopic called the new man the first one was the old man and how god took us from that place now because we confessed by a show of hands we confessed in our, we confessed that Jesus is lord we believed in our heart that Christ raised him from the dead a show of hands how many have done that do not be ashamed for your father now that is exactly where we are now the next thing is us understanding that we are new men and new men follow precepts that have been set by the master you have to follow them for you to become a kingdom man and a kingdom woman or lady for you to be able to be used by god hey repentance should be your attitude and repentance is change of mind not to entice you by the i'm not going to mention any social media and whiskey ni kama ni na wabash but not to but but not uh, to allude to any brand i am saying this that guys It is not about the person that posts something that you follow. This is not about vain glory. This is about the true God. The true God you have to have an intimate relation with. I read something yesterday. Uh nikienda as I was traveling. Matatu iko na sticker. Hizi je sticker za matatu zinakonga very very interesting. But this this one was not is zinakonga na interesting things but it was still interesting to me because it was talking about the spiritual side and it says ni maombi ya mama imenifikisha hapa na majibu ya baba imeniweka hapa so i didn't understand until i started scrutinizing it na nikafikiria but then as overthink maybe nili overthink but anyway if you are the maker of that post it's okay i am not here to bash you here's the thing you cannot fully depend on the prayers of your mother they are powerful very powerful but there is a place where if you want to be used by god it has to take you it has to take you 
it has nothing to do with the prayers of your mother. There might be a covenant being made by your mother and your father before the eyes of God. And God is a covenant keeping God. But you will never get to the place of maximizing that potential that is inside of you if you will not take up your cross and walk. It will not. That's why I say that we need to be used in the kingdom and to be used to it. You want to see things happening based on how scripture is. A common, common thing that we have kept on saying in this generation. We do not see the things of old. You want to see them, have a repentant heart. You shall see them. Because they are happening. They are happening. Have a repentant attitude. Only do the things God tells you to do. Do not be creative in the, word, in the words of God. Was quite creative. God, I may follow this way, follow that way. You do not have to keep on going to God and asking him, God, I want to hear your voice. God, I want to hear your voice. And all this, all this time, God has been speaking, in, has, has already spoken to you every single thing you need to know in that dusty Bible in your closet. The words of God will transcend everything. Bible in a semi, not my words, his words, says that even when they, I cannot deny myself, that even when, they are, even when they are faithless, I am still faithful. It says that the word of God, when it leaves, it's like the, it's like the rain. It shall go and do its purpose. It shall never return to him void. Rain, umai wana mvoi kirudi ju. Have you ever? That is the word of God. That if he releases it, it shall come to us and it shall accomplish its purpose. It shall accomplish its purpose. But you need to have a repentant attitude. The word of God will be next to you, but if you do not know it, forget about exploits. The Bible says that those who know the word of God shall do exploits. If it's in front of you, it's at the side of you, it's on the left side of you, and you, do, you have nothing to know it, forget exploits. You shall do the exploits of this world that leads to death. The only true exploits will only come if you know God. And it is in his scripture. God is not a secret. The more you tarry in the places of prayer, the more his mysteries become a normal thing for you. Nothing is confused in the body of Christ. It should not be confused. We should not be confused. The Bible says that there is an excellent spirit in Christ Jesus that is in us. That is the Holy Spirit. There is nothing concerning God that can ever, uh, can, can ever be contradicting in God. That's why we need to have a repentant heart. And having a repentant attitude as you walk, that is how the Holy Ghost will continue. You'll, you'll now start to understand that the Holy Spirit is gentle. That in as much as he speaks to you and you do not do it, he will never force you. He will never force you. And that's why we need this attitude, a repentant heart. Because a repentant heart will be ambiwa. Yo, yo kitu menunua hivi tu saizi, abu patio muenzako. And he will not wait for you to start fighting with him. If you don't do it, it's okay. You won't die. But someone who has a repentant attitude will understand that there is something I need to do. This is the attitude. If you want to see exploits in the kingdom, if you want to be partaker of this revival that we have kept on saying because it's coming and it is here, if you want to be a participator of it, you have to have a repentant heart. You have to have a repentant heart. Nothing else. Only that. Or we'll just be among the people that said, while I was saying, Ilikuja, Tukona move your Holy Ghost, and things continued, but me is Kufanya anything. Repentant heart. That's the attitude you should have. As I had said, I am not sure if you're going to finish, and I'm not going to rush the Holy Spirit, because we need to pray. I will read three verses, and then I'll try to finish up on this. Now, on the new man, the objective is this. In the new creation, this is the objective. We need to get to the maturity of Christ. And when Hillary and the Ibada team was, was singing uh, concerning Nifinyangi, and when he, he said, as he was singing, I could hear his words. As he was saying, he was saying that we need to be like who? Christ. This is the objective, maturity of Christ. The repentance and the breath you have is for us to look like 
Christ Jesus. It is not for us, let me not put myself in danger, but it is not for us to live wildly. It is not for us to live wildly. The things of the world are pleasurable. And if you have, if you have been in this sermon and you have felt like I have constantly beaten you up, know one thing, that God is a merciful God and he loves you. I cannot do anything. Romans chapter 8 tells us that, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. God loves you. Whatever you're feeling deep inside is not me. It's the doing of the Holy Spirit. Now, do not push him away. Don't push him away. Because in the book of Isaiah says that such God, go back to God when he can still be found. There is a time that he will not be found. And I pray that that will not be our story or any of our relative story or our family members. But there is a time that God will not be found. Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13. Um, I'm really sorry, I'm going to rush this kidogo. Um, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13 says, 13 to 15 says, Till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to, the perfect, to, a, to a perfect man, to the measure of our stature, of the fullness of Christ. This is the objective number one, um, which is maturity. Verse 14 says that we should no longer be children tossed and fall, uh, carried away by every wind of doctrine, by trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. You've seen you're talking about maturity. Maturity means being complete. Complete. We need to look like Christ Jesus. And that's why I'm saying that we need a repentative or a repentant attitude to look like Christ. There are things we are not supposed to be taking, and the Bible has said it in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2, that says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your of your what? So that you can be able to prove that which is the perfect, pleasing, and good or acceptable will of who? Of God. If you are here and you have been asking God, God, what is your will in my life? I will tell you this. It is all about, it will go, it's going to come once you have renewed your mind. You shall know. The Bible says, so that you can prove. You know, prove in Amanisha Unajua. It is just a matter of time that you want to see the results. See, even in Amanisha, we are, we are scholars, isn't you? So if you want to know the perfect, acceptable, and good will of your father, renew your mind and say no to the world. Do not conform to the patterns of the world. This is the new trendy thing. You will jump into it and it's a secular song behind it, thinking that God, because you have been called in the uh, in, the, in the maturity of Christ. You're jumping into it, thinking that, ah, manze God, mimi sin ulisevika. Eh? Eh, ulisevika? But the kingdom agendas might be slowly sleeping from your hands. Slowly sleeping from your hands. Start asking yourself, why are things not making sense in my life? The small, small things of the world you have brought in. The will of your father, which is supposed to be easy for you to grasp, becomes harder. Because you have conformed. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. Do not conform. Anything that the world does is not in the standard of God. Say no to the world. That's why the Bible says it. And John says it in a very tough way. Anyone who is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Straightforward. Nothing has been missed. That is just direct to the head. You have nothing to do with the world and the agendas of the world. Nothing. Do not copy the things of the world and bring them to church. Better yet, do not copy the things of the world and take it to your prayer closet. Better yet, do not copy the things of the world and take it to your job. Do not. As you can remember, and I thank God that Pastor Brian as he was starting this, as he was starting the sermon here at Shiloh, him being the first person to, to speak to us, he planted a seed that is very important for us to understand. Psalms chapter 1. 
Do not be found sitting with those people. Do not be found sitting with the scoffers. God loves the world. We have read about it. You should love the world. You should not love the things of the world. You should love the people in the world. That is what God says. He does not endorse kugonga watu kwa business. Let me come closer. He does not endorse kushortchange watu in the, in the name of, ben, of profit, in the name of God many bless. He does not It says, a dishonest gain is an abomination to the Lord. That is it. You need to know the words of God. These are, what, these are the things that I'm telling you. You need to have a repentative attitude if you want to go far in the kingdom of God. God shall scan your heart. He shall scan my heart. He shall see everything. Hey, unalalanga chini hata ukiniomba. Unapiganga magoti. But his story, his story, atutaitumia. Atutatumia his story. You have to work on it until it ends. In church is where love should thrive. In church is where patience should thrive. In church is where we should love on each other and take care of each other. So that when we meet with the people of the world, it becomes easy. In church should not be the place where we fight. It should never be the place where we fight. It should never be the place that we are contending with each other. Other, lazima mimi nionekane. Alafu you bring down somebody else. That should never happen because if it if it, it if it is carrying on, if it's carrying on, if it's carrying on every single time, the whole the presence of the Holy Spirit is not there. He is not there. We will lie to ourselves. You should not have grudges in this place. Because how will you love the world if you fight here? It is not supposed to be the place. You should know the heart of your father. You should know the heart of your father. If he loves you and you did nothing, love your neighbor. The Bible gives two commandments in the whole ten, ten, ten laws that we are given. Gives two commandments. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. The other one says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. May I bring it to you. The only way you can love your neighbor and love yourself well is only if you love the Father. And the words of the Father are in you. John chapter 14 says, those who shall do my commandments, I shall come to your heart my father and I shall make a home in your heart. Jesus Christ is gentle and kind. He will not force yourself in your agendas. Sometimes we think, nitafanya hii makosa until wakati tani slap. It might not slap you. It might not slap you. What it does is just brings you out of the agenda of being used by God. And you will never know that. You'll find yourself in cycles that do not make sense. The Bible says that it is in the no, it is in the word that there is the entrance of light. You can live a dark life. You can live a very dark life. And at the back of our minds, we can live the very dark life. At the back of our minds, we think we are praising Jehovah. But when problems start coming, is when you start realizing that there is darkness. And remember, two people, God and the devil, they are all after your generation. And there is nothing painful. The parents here will tell us, there is nothing painful as seeing your child living a bad life. There is nothing painful as that. So you want your generation to serve God, serve him now. You want your generation to, be re to, to remain as the people that shall spearhead the things of God, start now. You want... Let me tell you something. I read the Bible, and something very interesting. I can't remember the verse, um, but something very interesting I saw. It says that in the revelation, in the revealed word, in the revelation of God, when he reveals things, these are the truths that you shall leave your generation and the, your, your descendants and the descendants to come. So that thing that you have understood, that thing that has been brought to light by God be, because of you starring in the place of prayer. As I kept on saying, seek first the kingdom of God. That thing that you shall be revealed, it shall live for your descendants. It shall live for your descendants. If they still stick to that revealed word of God, 
Now you do not need to know God when you are 40s, when you are 50, or when you are 60. That, my brothers and sisters, will be something that you will start regretting with time. Know God now. Know God now. The Bible tells us that Solomon in his young age, he did exploits. He did great things. He did great things in his young age. And then he decided to follow the ways of other gods. Because of a woman and women. I'm not, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that women are bad. Everybody is a child of God. But for Solomon's fall, it was a woman. And it starts by saying that he started well until he fell. And after he fell, we all know the story. I'm going to documentary Ecclesiastes. Yote. And you'll see a man of sorrow. Sorrow. And let me present it to you. This man of sorrow was the wisest man on earth. Have to learn something from that. That you can get to a place where you'll miss out on everything. Time Misha. Read these two verses on the new man, on the maturity of Christ Jesus. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7, and Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. And that is all I have for you today. I will just ask you, with the help of at least maybe two worship leaders, or keyboardist Joe, Pastor Joe, if you are around, you can come and help me. I would like us to rise, and I want us to go before God. This has nothing to do with Kimu. Maybe then his mama up as equal a grudge in Amtu. He's Jalete Amtu. I have come to do the work of God. This is the work that this is the assignment given, and this is the assignment I shall do. I want us to sing one song. And I want us to reflect on the words that I have just shared by the grace of God. Look deep into your heart. You know that person that you have not forgiven. You know that you have an agenda in your heart that you want to be used by God because every one of us wants to be used by God. And let me tell you one thing. It doesn't matter where you are last night. It doesn't matter. Mimi sijakuja kukuchuna. I told you, when the Holy Ghost speaks to you, he is very calm and gentle. So you know where you are in your life. Remember, the mercy of God is new every morning as it is right now. We shall sing just one song as we pray. I will lead you in the song. Just open your mouth and praise your Father. Nina chotaka ni we ni we we tu na chotaka ni we ni we we tu haja ya moyo wangu Yesu tu haja. Haja ya moyo wangu, Yesu, Yesu tu. Nachotaka niwe, Nachotaka niwe, niwe we tu. Nachotaka niwe, niwe we tu. Go before your father. Just go before your father. Even as we continue seeing, as Joe continues leads us, go before your father. You know where your heart is. I do not know anything concerning your heart, but only God knows. You cannot lie to God. God knows. That person that you have not been forgiven. The person that you have been keeping in your heart. If you want to be used by God, you need to understand that you need the words of God inside you. Whatsoever God tells you to do, you need to do it. There is no place for you to fight. Don't wrestle with God. You can wrestle with so many things. 
but not God. You will not win that battle. For the word says that do not think that God has tarried in his promises. He just waits for us to come to repentance. So today, call upon your Father. And at this moment, if you can hear my voice, if you have been wondering who is this that we are speaking about, I will ask you to just take a step of faith and come to the front. You know who you are. You know where you are with your father. You know where you are with yourself. If you do not know who Christ is, I will ask you kindly, just come to the front. God wants to have a relationship with you. He doesn't want to fight with you. His agenda is never about fighting. His agenda is about love. And there is a lot in this kingdom that you can do for God. So if that's you, you can just step forward. If we have none, I will just urge us, if there is something you're believing in God, just raise your hand up and we shall pray together. If it is you that we have spoken about, that yesterday you know where you are, you know the things you've been writing on message, you know the things that you have been putting in your heart, if it is you, Father, if it is you that we have spoken about, if it is you that the Holy Ghost has convicted, I will ask you to raise your hand up. And we shall pray together. I have nothing to do. I will take you nowhere. But there is one who you should always be in reference to. And that is God, Jesus. That is God. He is the only person. Let's pray. Mighty and everlasting Father, we come before you this day. We thank you, Father God, for the hands that have been raised high above, Father. These are men and ladies that have decided, Father God, that I will not be ashamed, Father God, for your truth. God, these are your children, Father God. We are all your children, dear Lord. Father, I pray, dear Lord God Almighty, that the words that you have placed in our hands, Father God, that they shall find fruit. And Father God, they shall find the soil that is fertile, Father. And they shall grow, Father God. And Lord God Almighty, Father God, we shall not stand in your place. We shall not stand in your way, Father. That we shall not be a hindrance, dear Lord, to what you are doing in our lives, Father. Father, we know you as a merciful Lord. And Lord God Almighty, you know our different needs and our different flaws, Lord. And I pray, Father God, that you may forgive us in every single thing that we have done, Father, in ignorance of your word and also in knowledge of your word. Father, I pray, dear Lord God Almighty, Father God, that we shall know how to live with people and we shall know how to live with you, Father. Father, I pray, Lord God Almighty, that your word shall stick in our hearts, Father. I pray, dear Lord God Almighty, Father God, that we shall live by your word. That, Father God, we shall not stand by our words, Lord, but your words. Father God, for it is your word, dear Lord God Almighty, that has been able to let us live up to this day. Father, we call you the ancient of days, Lord, because you existed, Father God, even before time. And Lord God Almighty, you are not inside time, Father. And Lord God, even as we continue living, Father, we pray, dear Lord God Almighty, that we shall remember it is not, Father God, based on our age and times, Lord. That, Father God, we shall not be found with the people of the world, Father. We shall love them, Father. We shall not hate them, Father. But we shall not accept, Father God, what they do. And we call that love. That is not love, Father. That we shall live in the right love. Where we love people, Father God, and we hate that which you hate, Father. That we shall not be shy, Father God, to bring light for you have said that we are the light of this world. Father God, we shall take our positions, Father God, in this priesthood, Father God. And Lord God Almighty, there is nothing we shall bow to, Father. That we shall not bow to Baal, Father. We shall serve you for who you are. That the systems of this world, Father God, have nothing on you, as you said. Lord, I praise your name and I lift up your name on high. Because you alone are God and there is no one else apart from you. Every need in this place, Father God, may you minister unto them, Father. For this is my humble prayer, dear Lord God Almighty. And we have prayed in the mighty name of Jesus.
who is our Lord and Savior. Amen.